So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and today Google just threw a whole bunch of products on the market today with their Google Pixel 2 launch event. We're going to talk mostly about the Pixel and the Pixel 2 in this event, but there were so many products I had to take note of them. They launched a Google Home Mini, which is a $49 speaker with Google Home and it comes included with your purchase of the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. They also announced the Google Home Max. They announced the Google Pixel Book with Pixel Pen. Pen. It's like a pen that's supposed to be the most accurate pen ever. Every time a product's announced, whether whatever company it is, it's always the most accurate until the next company outdoes them. So for now, they probably have a super accurate stylus with the Pixel Book running Chrome OS with Core i5 i7 processors. Looks like a competitor to the Microsoft Surface Book launched earlier this year. Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL, which we're going to talk about mostly in this video. Google Pixel Buds, which looks like an AirPod competitor, as well as Google Clips, which is an AI artificial intelligence camera that's supposed to take pictures without you actually controlling it, which I don't know how many people are going to feel about that currently, but it looks like it could be a pretty cool feature. If you want to get those moments that you actually don't even remember to capture, this camera can do that. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the phones. There's the Google Pixel 2 and the Google Pixel 2 XL. Now, both of these phones do come in multiple colors. The smaller one comes in three different colors. It comes in a white color, a kind of blue color, and a black color. Now, the Pixel XL 2, the larger version, only comes in two colors, black and white. Both have hybrid aluminum designs with a single camera that can do portrait mode through software. So, at first, I was like, no dual camera. You're already losing to the competition but Google said we got some software tricks that are going to allow us to get those similar photos without the need of two cameras so we're going to have to test that here on the channel here the Pixel XL2 is going to start at $849 and the smaller version goes for about $649 so this is the sweet spot for a flagship phone and better than what we're seeing from other competitors I think this is going to be a home run hit for Google when it comes to their price point so these phones also bring new cameras 12.2 megapixel cameras with f 1.8 apertures and one of the most surprising things is that we now have ois and eis combined so electronic image stabilization along with optical image stabilization giving hardware and software which they were pushing in this event the capability of producing an amazing photo dxo mark rated it the highest camera ever in a smartphone short-lived by the 8 plus and a note 8 which just tied a couple days ago as the best smartphone camera ever on the google pixel 2 so if you're looking for an amazing camera this is going to be one to really seriously keep in mind this year these cameras can shooting at 4k 30 not 4k 60 so they're not leading the edge when it comes to 4k video recording but those com combinations of software and hardware we talked about earlier can help them produce amazing video now the front facing cameras are 8 megapixel sensors that can record in up to 1080p video recording so these sensors are not going to be the best for front facing camera they should be solid but i don't think they're going to beat everyone because they don't shoot in 2k on the front so definitely the rear cameras are something to you really pay attention to with the Google Pixel and Pixel XL2. Now, Google didn't push or talk that much about their battery life, but the smaller Pixel 2 comes with a 2700 milliamp hour battery, and the Pixel XL2 is going to come with a 3520 milliamp hour battery. Both should be giving you some good battery life. I mean, the smaller Pixel at 5 inch screen gives you a bigger battery size than the iPhone 8 Plus, which already had some of the best battery life. Couple that with the Android Oreo that's coming stock on these phones, which is, has battery optimization, should give you some stellar battery battery life on both pixel no matter which one you do go with talking about design on these phones they both do have hybrid aluminum designs so what that means is you get like a glass ish design with aluminum so you know it's going to be personal preference whether you like this or not it comes with those you know sleek simple colors so i think a lot of people will like this but some but some won't like the look of the google pixel 2 just because it, it meshes two different things together it also has a color home button some might not like this design it does have you know that kind of you got to really 
dig those you know colorful looks that's what i think you're gonna like about the google pixel unless you go with the black one then you're probably looking at a more minimalistic looking design now both of these do have fingerprint scanners on the rear which is in a location very similar to the lg g6 so this should rest very easily on your finger if you are using the fingerprint scanner on the rear no iris scanning technology here for the google pixel 2 or facial recognition so they're not really leading the industry when it comes to biometric security here on these new pixel phones Talking about the displays a little bit further. Now, if you do decide to get the Pixel 2, the smaller one, you are gonna get a cinematic display. What that means is a 16 by nine display aspect ratio. If that's still too much tech mumbo jumbo, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a flat display, what we're kind of used to on our older smartphones. If you get the Pixel 2, you're getting a Galaxy S8 LG G6 style of display. That's the 18 by nine tall, almost full screen display with very thin bezels at the top and the bottom. That's the popular choice. I think most people are gonna buy the this year with the pixel because that's really what's hot this year but i'm actually going to be picking up the smaller pixel 2 because i want a smaller phone i always buy these larger phones so that's the one i'm more interested in in the smaller pixel 2. Now the Pixel 2 smaller version does have a full HD display, but they were touting how it's an AMOLED display with the most pixels ever in that size of a display at 4.1 million pixels. So it should be an extremely good full HD panel, probably better than any other full HD panel on the market, but we're gonna have to see about that when we get it on hand. Now the larger one does have a QHD display. It's a P OLED display and has a 100% P3 color gamut rating while the smaller one has a 95%. So if you're looking for the highest resolution, the highest color accuracy for them photos you're going to want the larger pixel xl2 for the most in-depth you know color accuracy and all that you know photography nerdy stuff that's going to be you both the Google Pixel 2 and the Google Pixel XL 2 are going to support Daydream View as well as they have other things like Bluetooth 5.0, NFC, USB 3.1, Gen 1, as well as, you know, they don't have no longer a headphone jack. So they didn't mention this in their conference here, but no headphone jack on the Google Pixel series. So, you know, for those of you who didn't like what Apple did with no headphone jack on their smartphone, you're not going to like what Google did here with their phones either. However, they did counter that in a similar fashion that Apple did with the front firing speakers, which should be plenty loud and plenty bassy for those of you who like front facing speakers. It's also noted that the Google Pixel and Pixel XL2 should have updates for at least three years. So if you want your updates, these are the phones to get. I'm picking one up for that reason because I wanna be on the latest and cutting edge of Android. So I'm getting some Pixel 2 action here on the channel just because of that reason right there. You know, if you want a phone to last a long time, you want software updates and this is what Google is going to provide here with this Android device. They also talked about in this event Google Lens. So we've seen Bixby Vision earlier this year. Nobody really asked for this, but similarly here in Google Lens, actually a little bit more advanced here in Google Lens, we're looking at basically a software recognition where you could point your camera at things and Google just knows what to like tell you what to do with it. So for example, if you're out and you see a post around the wall and you take a picture like what is this Google's just going to tell you what it is going to display all the information about it if you look at a movie poster it's going to say where the movies are what movie this is show you a trailer so essentially making life easier when you don't you see something you don't know kind of like these I would say like the Shazam of you know things out in the world for your phone so you know how Shazam could just automatically recognize what song is playing that's basically what's happening here with Google Lens with stuff in your visual field also there was a push for AR so AR was pushed here on the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel XL 2. So if you do want to use AR, Apple was first this year to announce this stuff, but you're getting it here on Google Pixel as well. So you're not being left out when it comes to AR capabilities here on the Google series. So iPhone users, this is going to be really the hard, harder choice. I think Galaxy is kind of like an anti-iPhone. I think that Google Pixel and Pixel XL 2 are both going to be more of the kind of phone that might persuade an iPhone user. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it that was a announced here with the Google Pixel 2 and the Google Pixel XL 2. These phones are fantastic and I want to share with you my reactions, my opinions now on these phones. So I think these phones, you know, 
are actually playing catch up with the industry here. I don't think they're bringing anything that's groundbreaking here. Once again, I think we've seen this all year with these all screen displays, water resistance, Snapdragon 835, high levels of RAM, Bluetooth 5.0. A lot of the stuff here with the Google Pixel XL and XL2 have been seen. But what I am very interested about these phones is that they do have a camera that does a whole bunch with just a single lens and is so highly rated. So I'm very excited to see how this camera performs on the Google Pixel XL2 and 2. Also, I'm excited about the fact that Android Oreo, as well as the updates, are going to be frequent with these phones for the next few years. So you're going to be on the cutting edge of the AI movement here with Google with this phone. So this phone is a future-proof phone, and that excites me as well. But in terms of hardware, we've kind of reached a place where all phones are kind of giving you basically the same stuff. Now, the front-facing camera I'm not too excited about because it only shoots in 1080p, and I wish it had 4K 60 frames per second. So iPhone 10 definitely going to have an advantage there over Google Pixel. Also, I think the design is not that groundbreaking. It's not that exciting. It didn't blow me away like, you know, what I've seen with other phones phones this year when the galaxy s8 first came out that was pretty groundbreaking but we've already seen these all screen displays and i think that the iphone 10 has a lead here over the google pixel by default so google pixel already has lost to me in my opinion to iphone 10 but again this is all subjective here now we already talked about the facts and the specs so what is your take on the google pixel 2 and the google pixel xl 2 let's chat about it down below in the comments section of this video if you found this video helpful enjoyable informational go ahead and drop a like down below and uh, consider subscribing if you are new here. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next video and peace.